All right, let's go to start this video. I just want to show where I am in the progression series. So since we're playing the Hobbit sagas, I'm actually going backwards a little bit to just after Shadow and Flame was released. I did put out the poll to see if you guys would be okay if I used cards from the second Hobbit, Hobbit box. And even though the majority said yes, it wasn't a super majority. It wasn't a ton more yes than those. So I'm just gonna keep it pure progression. So I'm only gonna be using cards up to overhill and underhill as you can see on this chart. This tips and tricks is a simple one. If you have an enemy trapped in a trap like Forest Snare, the enemy will still get dealt a shadow card in the combat phase. You just don't flip the shadow card over. And then at the end of the combat phase, you discard the shadow card. All right, let's get to the video. All right, let's play We Must Away or Break a Day. We're going to remove a lot of cards from the deck, and then we're going to reveal one card per player. And then side 1B is just 7 Progra. So we need to remove all the sack cards. So I'm going to give those a shuffle, and I'm going to put them underneath a little sack that I have to represent the sack deck. And then we're going to take the treasure cards out of play. Maybe I can get those. And then we're also going to take the three trolls and the troll cave and set that out of play, leaving us a very small encounter deck. All right, we're also going to get a hero. It's Bilbo Baggins, 1113. Uh, the first player gains control of him, and then he cannot gain any resources from player card effects. And if he leaves play, we're going to lose the game. And he's the Baggins Sphere. It's not a sphere. All right, Dine Ironfoot's back. He's going to boost my dwarves when he's ready, plus one attack and plus one willpower. And then, of course, he's an amazing defender, and he gives me the leadership sphere. So this is going to be our first deck where we're actually looking at the if you control five dwarfs archetype. So we're doing a little bit of a dwarf swarm deck here. A new hero, Ori. Ori's a 2-2-1-3, two, two, and then when I control five dwarf characters, I get to draw an additional card at the start of my turn. Very, very cool. He's going to help fuel this dwarf swarm that I'm hoping to amass and beat the quest with. And he gives me access to lore, which gives me even more card draw. And finally, the partier of all dwarves, Nori. Nori is four hit points and he's a two, one, two. He's only nine threat. And then after I play a dwarf ally from my hand, I get to drop my threat by one. So that's very nice, keeps my threat nice and low. That's part of my strategy. In addition to amassing a big dwarf army, I'm also going to try to keep my threat really low before I advance to stage two. If you're getting some serious conflict at the Carrick vibes, uh, you should, because it's very similar. Both have a quest stage at the start that doesn't really have much to do except for low quest points. And then if you advance too fast, you'll get eaten by trolls. And then the trolls have sack cards. So it's very similar to Conflict at the Carrick, and my strategy is also going to be very similar. I'm going to try to build a big army while I'm on stage one. I'm also going to try to keep my threat very low. And then when I'm ready, I'm going to advance and hopefully be able to beat stage two in one turn. And if I do that, I have succeeded. As far as the treasures go, if I can get them, great. This deck has grabbed the treasures before, but I'm not counting on it. All right, I'm going to start out with the Miner of the Iron Hills in my hand. That's great. It's just a cheap dwarf. That's the only reason he's in this deck. Hey, all right, a very good tale. That's a great way to get the Dwarf Swarm going. I can exhaust two allies, add up their cost, shuffle my deck, discard five cards, and put two allies into play that don't have a cost greater than the cost of the two allies I exhausted. So, fantastic economy. One of the strongest cards in the game. Uh, Test of Will, definitely need it in this quest. Faramir, that's going to boost willpower. Of course, we know what Gandalf does. And then after an ally leaves play, I can draw two cards. I normally don't like running Test of Will. I try to build around it. But this quest has one treachery that damages all your allies, like this one! This is the card I have to reveal! And it, and it says, deal one damage to each ally in play, two damage if there is a troll in the staging area. Yep, that's one reason to have a test of will. It's going to kill my dwarf swarm. And then there's another treachery that makes you discard all your attachments. So between those two cards, it's pretty hard to build a deck. You can make a deck without one or the other, but not both. All right, what do I draw? Okay, Untroubled by Darkness, just a one of, but it's going to give me a massive willpower boost when I need it. So glad to have that in hand. I'm going to hold on to that to the end of the game. Alrighty, looking at my hand, I am going to play nothing. And that is my strategy. I'm probably not going to play anything for three rounds. Since I do not want to make any progress, I'm just going to send Nori for three. And let's see what we get. Okay, it's a treachery, and it says 
Uh, basically, if there's no troll enemies in the staging area, I am going to have Doom 2. So I'm adding no threat. So I made three progress that I didn't want to. Yeah, guys, I am not going to play a card. There's a treachery that makes me discard attachments. There's a treachery that makes me kill my allies. Cool, another very good tale. I'm going to make some very good tales later on in this game. But when I have heroes that can quest for more than I actually want them to, why would I play a card when I could just potentially lose it? So I'm just going to sit here for the next few turns, build up some money, and build up some cards in hand, and then I'm just going to explode my board state over the course of a couple turns. <laughs> there we go. Wind whipped rain, discard all my attachments. And that's why I'm not playing any cards right there. I would have lost any attachment I put in play. So unless I wanted to use my test of will, but why? I don't need anything right now. <laughs> all right, Daron's runes. Let's draw two cards. Great. Gladium's greeting. All right. I can drop my threat by six. That's perfect. That's the only negative about hovering here on stage one for a while. I might have my threat go up too much. All right, I'll discard the Miner of the Iron Hills to that Daron's runes. So, yep, I'll play the Gladrium's Greeting and drop my threat by six. There we go. So I have no more spirit resources. Couldn't cancel a treachery if I wanted to. Uh, I don't want to make any progress. I really don't. I don't want to get to seven. So I'm just going to send Bilbo again. So I'm just going to quest for one. And hopefully I don't make any... Oh, I do. Okay, so it's Doomed 1, and then i got to place the top cards of the encounter deck on the bottom of the encounter deck, where X is the number of players in the game. That I guess that hurts you at Stage 2? I don't really know. That card's really not that bad. Okay, uh, so I do make another progress that I didn't want to make. And then we're going to end the round, and I forget to raise my threat, but no worry, I forget to drop it later. And then I draw... <laughs> Really? Keely? I was hoping to draw Feely. So Keely says when he enters play from your hand, you can search your deck for his brother and put his brother into play. And Keely and Feely both have the same text. Well, I just spent all my spirit resources, so I can't get him into play. All right, I will just send Bilbo on the quest for one. It's a three threat location, but I don't care. This is the location I'm hoping to find. My strategy is usually to stay at stage one until I get a troll camp. And so now I have a troll camp. So that lets you remove sacked cards when you're at stage two. So you can uh, spend a Baggins resource and get rid of one of those sacked cards when you make it to stage two. But you need to have that location in play. So now that that location is in the game, I'm going to be ready to advance. Oh, and I draw. We are not idle. Okay, I love drawing this card because I'm not using my heroes, right? So... I can exhaust them and then gain money and draw a card. It's great. That's a fantastic card. I wish I would have had one earlier to give me even more money in card draw. So this round, I'm going to exhaust all three of my heroes when I play We Are Not Idle, which will also let me draw a card. And I'm going to give the three resources from exhausting my heroes to Nori. So now I have five spirit resources. I'm going to draw a card. It's another dwarf, Erebor Record Keeper, and now I can afford Keely. And then Nori drops my threat by one because I played a dwarf from my hand. And now I get to search my deck for his brother. Let's see. Where's the other mall Santa? Ah, oh, there he is. Okay. So I got the other guy in. Give him a deck a shuffle. So now I have five dwarves, so I'll be able to draw an additional card at the start of each round. And both of these guys have two hit points, so they can handle that one treachery if I reveal it without any trolls in play. All right, I had forgotten to give Bilbo his resource, so he has five now. That seems pretty good. All right, committing to the quest, I make a small mistake here. They're each only uh, one willpower. I'm used to dying being ready. So I would have sent Bilbo as well to at least cover the threat and staging. Uh, this is doomed one, and then I either have to raise my threat by four or reveal another encounter card. So I will just raise my threat by that doomed one, and then... Reveal another encounter card, and it's discard all my Baggins resources. Okay. So, like I said, I would have sent Bilbo on the quest, so I sent at least three willpower to cover this three threat location and staging. So I shouldn't have made that progress on the actual quest. It's not a big deal. It's not going to matter in a minute. But it was a mistake. I wanted to point it out. Just used to dying being ready and helping out his fellow brethren here. All right, I get to draw two cards. Hey, all right. I get another We Are Not Idle. And then I get Legacy of Durin, 
So that attaches to a dwarf. And then when I play a dwarf from my hand, I have to exhaust it and I get to draw a card. That is uh, a card that's had an errata. So you only get one use out of it around. Still, very good. Very, very good card. All right, looking at my hand, I think I'm ready to explode some dwarves onto the board state. It's going to get kind of crazy very fast. That's the strategy, guys. That's what I do. I spend about five rounds building up money, building up cards. And then I slap them all down on the table at once. And then we just power through stage two. So that's why trying to get the treasures, I don't even worry about it. All right, let's play an Erebor Hammersmith. There's no attachments in my discard pile. So he's going to enter play. I get to drop my threat. And I get to draw a card from Legacy of Durin. And the card I draw is another dwarf. Okay. I'm going to play a very good tail, so I'm going to exhaust two allies. I will exhaust Keely and Feely. They're great targets for this since you only play, you only paid three resources for one of them. And then you get six resources worth of allies. Whoops, might have tossed a dwarf there. If I'm building a deck that has a very good tail, I try to make sure I have at least 25 allies in that deck. All right, let's look at these five cards. I can put in two allies that cost a total of six. There's one and there's two. So the Ziggy Miner and Bofer, they are both just going to be questing. That's what they're in the deck for. They're just there for willpower. The other cards get discarded. And then I'm going to send on the quest, since I'm up against three. I don't care if I progress right now. And I don't progress, actually. I reveal another troll camp. So I actually have to raise my threat by one. I'm going to travel to one of these troll camps. I don't need two of them in play. And then, because all my heroes are ready, I will play this We Are Not Idle. So I'm going to give three resources. Uh, let's see, I'll give them to the partier again. Nori, you get all the money. And then I get to draw a card. And sneak attack. Great. That's great. All right, we'll go to the next round. I think this round is going to be the last one we spend at this stage. All right, Bilbo's got two resources. I draw two cards. I get another A Very Good Tale and another Gandalf. So yeah, I am sitting really good. Everything is going according to plan. Let's play a very good tail again for six. Give the deck a shuffle. And we're gonna put in allies that can't cost more than six combined. Let's see what we get. All right, Snowborn Scout, another Ziggy, and then, ooh, Dory, perfect. All right, so I'm going to put in Ziggy and Dory. Dory's pretty cool. So you can exhaust him and assign any amount of damage that a hero would have taken. So he basically can save your hero from dying if he's ready. He can just take all the damage the hero would have taken. Pretty cool. Um, but he's most likely just going to be questing for me. All right, I will play another dwarf from hand. So the Erebor Record Keeper gets to draw a card. Uh, okay, Protector of Lorien. So that's another way to boost my willpower. And then I forgot to trigger... Nori. So I should have dropped my threat there, but I forgot to. Okay, sneak attack. Gandalf! I'm going to drop my threat by five. So my threat is low. My board state is full. Let's go to stage two. Everything is ready, and I'm ready to take on these trolls. All right, let's commit characters on the quest. We want to make sure we quest over the location in the staging area and clear the three quest points on the location that is active. That card surges if there's no trolls. This one is doomed one, and I have to raise my threat by four or reveal an additional card. Well, since I just dropped my threat by five, I will just raise it right back up. So that's fine. It was a net of zero, but really didn't hurt me any. I just need to be under 33. That's the big one. All right, so like I said, I quested for more than I needed, so that's why that one extra progress didn't matter. 2A, we put all the trolls and the troll cave into the staging area, and then we shuffle the encounter discard pile back into the encounter. Side 2B has one quest point, but that doesn't matter. It says, forced, if there are no troll enemies left in play, or if there is no cards left in the encounter deck, advance to the next stage, and then any time players would place progress tokens on this quest, we're going to discard an equal number of cards from the encounter deck. Instead, progress is placed on the active location before triggering that effect. So the Troll Cave, it's a 2-4, and it says, Immune to player card effects, a players cannot travel to Troll Cave unless Bilbo Baggins has the Troll Key attached. And the first player spends five Baggins resources two Baggins resources instead if the first player 
controls the troll purse. And then we have our three trolls straight out of Nightmares on Sesame Street. We have Bert, 23 engagement. Players cannot play attachments on troll enemies. When he engages you, you have to sack one, and then you have to raise your threat by one to keep him in play engaged with you. Tom, troll enemies can only be attacked by one character at a time. Same thing, when he engages you, sack one, and you have to raise your threat by one to keep him engaged with you. And then finally, William. Troll enemies not engaged if a player cannot take damage. When he engages you, sack two, raise your threat by one to keep him engaged with you. They all have a stat line of three, five, two, and they have varying hit points. If I keep my threat under 33, I only have to worry about Bert. Now you might be wondering, Chad, where is this troll key and this troll purse you were talking about? Well, they're buried somewhere in the encounter deck. If you get lucky enough to find these cards, you have a chance to get the treasures by clearing the troll cave. But you cannot travel to the troll cave unless you have the troll key. And the troll key comes into play if it is discarded or revealed as an encounter card. If it enters play, you attach it to a troll. To take it from the troll, you have to damage the troll from an attack, not direct damage, and then you have to exhaust Bilbo to claim it, and then attach it to him. And then you need to spend five resources to travel to the troll cave. Then you need to clear the troll cave. Or if you have the troll purse, which is also randomly found in the encounter deck, it'll only cost you two Baggins resources to travel to the troll cave. But you have to kill the troll to get the troll purse. It's very hard to do this if the troll key doesn't come out while you're still at stage one. And since it didn't come out while I was at stage one, I'm not going to worry about it. Because it could be in the bottom, I don't know, six or seven cards of the encounter deck, and I'd never get it. Or if I did, I wouldn't have enough time to damage the troll and then spend the resources to travel to the cave and then clear the cave. I'll run out of encounter cards. Funny enough, the only card that could actually help me if the troll key is in the bottom half of the deck, is the worst card of the game. The end comes. How crazy is that, that the worst card in the game is the only card that could help you find these treasures? Uh, I don't like how you have to find the treasures in this. I think it's really gimmicky, and I wish there was a different way. If I was going to house rule it, I would say set the troll key and the troll purse aside out of play with everything else at the start of the game, and then... Stage two, I would say randomly attach the troll key to one of the trolls and then shuffle the troll purse into the deck. So if you get the purse, that'll help you, but at least the key would be in play and then you have a chance to get it. Having it come out randomly or not come out at all until the very end of the game, uh, it makes it really hard to get these treasures. So I wish there was an easier way to do it. I have got the treasures with this deck, but it's not going to happen this time. I have no idea where that key is and I'm not gonna risk a loss just trying to find it. So let's continue with the quest. All right, so after that tangent, we are at the end of the quest phase. So Gandalf leaves play because he was snuck in, and now I can play Valiant Sacrifice and draw two cards because he left play. And the cards I get are another Legacy of Durin and another Gandalf. Okay, Gandalf's a plenty. So let's see, I will travel to this troll camp because I only need it in play for this turn and it adds threat while it's in the staging area trolls threat are increased x x is per player all right so let's engage bert he's gonna make me sack one so that means i take my sack deck and i take the top card i'm gonna give another shuffle just to make sure and we reveal the tough sack so attached to the character not gandalf with the highest printed defense without a sack attached Attached character cannot ready, attack, defend, commit to the quest, or trigger effects. If this sack card is removed, we shuffle it back into the sack deck. All right, so that's going on dying. And then because the troll camp is in play, I can do the action. Exhaust Bilbo Baggins, spend one Baggins resource, and remove one sack card from play. So I will do that. Bilbo's exhausted, the sack card goes back into the deck, and there we go. So I took care of that sack. Now I'm going to shuffle in the discard pile because I forgot to do that. So I have to basically work my way through the entire encounter deck, and that's how we're going to get out of stage two. All right, I'm getting attacked by Bert. I will defend with uh, one of the Ziggies. And it says uh, if the attack enemy is a troll, sack one. But I could spend a Baggins resource to cancel that, so I will. 
and then uh, the Ziggy that defended is dead. And then I will do another A Very Good Tale. I might as well. I got two ready allies that have a total cost of five. So let's get a couple more characters on the board. You can see my, my deck is super thin here. So I've almost gone through my entire deck. And, oh, hey, okay. I was going to play Faramir next turn, but I can get my second copy that I have in the deck for free. So I might as well do that. And then uh, discard those cards. And, you know, I do have that... We are not idle, but I kind of forget about it because I think it's just win more at this point. I will just attack with one character because that's all I'm allowed to attack with and do one damage. And we're just going to go into this turn and I'm going to draw my two cards. I get a Gladium's Greeting and I get a Hardy Leadership attached to a Leadership Hero. Each Dwarf character gets plus one hit point. That would help me survive that treachery that deals the damage to all my allies while there's no trolls in play. While the trolls are in play, all my allies are pretty much dead. Most of them don't have two hit points. They only have one. So that would that would wipe out my board pretty good, but um, I have a test of will, so I'm not worried about anything. So all I'm doing now is I'm just getting as many bodies on the table and as many willpower boosting cards on the table as I can. So Protector of Lorien will go on Nori, uh, my threat is dropping like a stone, and I'm gonna I'll play Gladium's Greeting and drop my threat by six more. So threat's not an issue. I have a test of will. I have plenty of resources still, so I might as well play Gandalf. I don't need to drop my threat. There's no point in damaging any of these enemies, so I guess I'll just draw three cards. I don't really know what I could draw that could help me at this point, but I gotta do something with his ability. And three lore cards, so I can't I can't play any of them. All right, so at this point, it's just... And because I have the resources, I might as well put in that hardy leadership. So I'll attach that to Dine. So all my dwarves have plus one hit point. All right, so these are all the characters I'm sending on the quest. It's everybody but Dine, and I exhausted Faramir to give everyone plus one willpower. And it's a total of 45. See it way over there? All righty, so in the staging area, I have eight. And I reveal a two threat location so that means i'm um, against 10 and then the active location has three so 13 from 45 is 22 so i've made 22 progress so let's discard the top 22 cards of the encounter deck i think there's about 30 that i have to work through so i'm going to be a little short it looks like I am seven cards short. Okay, so I need to muster up seven more willpower. So I can exhaust... I'm sorry, you don't actually exhaust it. I just keep throwing the token on there to remind myself. You just discard three cards to Protector of Lorien. So that gets me three more willpower, and then I still have two spirit resources to play Untroubled by Darkness, which will give one more willpower to all my dwarves. Dine didn't quest, so that's 12 more willpower, giving me a grand total of... Love! 57! All right! Quested for 57 here at the end. And that is definitely going to give me enough. Moves the amount of cards I get to discard all the way over there. So my encounter deck is empty. Stage 2B said if the encounter deck ever runs out, you advance to the next stage. Uh, some nice flavor text here on 3A. And then 3B says, when revealed, remove all troll enemies and sack cards from the game. If troll cave is in the victory display, the players have discovered the treasure card. Sting, Glamdring, and Orcris. The players have won the game. Alrighty, so trolls go out of play. We have done all the win conditions, and that is how you can beat the first quest in the Hobbit box. We must away a break of day. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that one. Take care. Bye-bye.